hi everyone and welcome back to the channel <laughs> it's nice to see you all again thank you so much for tuning in and i want to say thank you to all my recent subscribers as well thank you so much thank you for all the likes thank you for all the shares thank you for all the comments you know um, and it's becoming a community and i thank you for all the messages thank you for all the dms the emails i really do appreciate it right uh, especially um knowing that me having to put out videos is it's a lot of work on my part in the sense that i do have a day job so um having to make time out to be able to do these videos takes um, a lot for me but your messages your comments your participation is very encouraging so thank you <laughs> thank you so much and in that line today we will be tackling a subscriber question so now some of you are beginning to suggest to me what topics to talk about which is brilliant because i'm actually running out of topics so if you really need me to clarify anything around artificial intelligence machine learning models all of that please put a comment below and i will pick it up now today's uh, uh, brilliant subscriber question is from a brilliant subscriber so shout out to at at robert c hundu 7556 exclamation mark so shout out to them thank you so much <laughs> for your comment and uh and his question is or their question is how can we use machine learning to reduce or remove algorithmic bias to enhance data quality that is a loaded question so today uh we'll be breaking down um the question starting with understanding what what algorithmic bias is and then hopefully i'll be able to explore how we can make machine learning models fair meaning free from bias and how we can also how or and how machine learning process can process can also reduce or even eliminate algorithmic bias during the training process as well okay so Stay tuned as we dive in. <laughs> now, let's start with talking about what um, algorithmic bias is. Now, algorithmic bias happens when a machine learning model uh, produces unfair outcomes. Now, I'll break it down this way. Machine learning models are trained using algorithms, right? These algorithms are applied to a data set. Remember, the date, I've said it in some videos in the past, uh, data is the fuel of um, artificial intelligence. So all the machine learning models that are out there um, are trained on data, all right? And uh, the, the main um, superpower of artificial intelligence is to be able to perform tasks quickly by making predictions and how it's able to do that is based on it's been trained on a data set and it can make predictions based on historical data that it's been trained on now machine learning models are trained on data using algorithms now algorithmic bias happens when a machine learning model um, outputs unfair outcomes. These unfair outcomes are due to bias or an uneven data set. Remember the models are trained on the data. So it's their data set that helps them in making the predictions. This is the pattern you should look out for. A biased data will lead to a biased machine learning model which will lead to an unfair outcome or bad prediction or unfair predictions so take a hiring model a machine learning model for example so there is a machine learning model that has been trained to hire people and that means they're going to receive someone's cv and based on their training data set which is trained on past CVs or resumes, it would determine if that person is hired or not. Now, a hiring model trained on past resumes might favor a certain group of people if the historical data shows um, that group of people dominated in the data set. 
Now, I will use gender, so male, female. If that hiring machine model, machine learning model, is trained on a male-dominated data, the chances of it giving an unfair outcome to a female CV is very high because on its data set, it only has patterns generated for male dominated data. Okay, such that when a female data comes in, it's not able to match the pattern properly with what it already knows. Okay, it's all about what it knows. And as humans, we are like that, which is why knowledge is key. We keep seeking to learn more every day. Now, for a machine learning model, unfortunately, they are determined, their learning is determined by a human. So we feed them what type of data they are supposed to learn from. If that data for the hiring machine learning model is male dominated, the chances of it predicting or turning down a female resume or CV is very high. Okay, so that is why biased data leads to biased model, which leads to an unfair outcome or a biased outcome as well. The impact of this is if we do have a poor data quality and a poor data quality is the data is uneven. So, yes, it is possible that during the training of the data, they only had although the engineers could only find male dominated resumes, right? Or the resumes they were able to collect worldwide in actual reality has more male dominated data compared to a female dominated data or from compared to female data. Training the machine learning model on that data, even though that's the reality, all right, is a poor data quality because it's uneven and an, 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 and an uneven data equals to a poor data quality because it will end up leading to unfair predictions which will then lead to lack of trust in the system the machine learning model is built on. Give for example um, the issues around law enforcement security systems out there. Right. If most of the backlash with law enforcement um, AI system is it is skewed against a certain demographic of people, right? And that brings lack of trust. Yes, the reality is there is more, in reality, there is more data uh, reported by a certain group of people than some group of people. It doesn't make it fair to that system because an AI system does not understand human nuances okay so it's just going to take everything mathematically as a matter of fact so giving it that data set even though it's uneven and even though it's real it's the reality but it is uneven would lead to an uneven biased outcome in the end so ensuring an even an even um, data means that you're ensuring that your data quality is good Take, for example, um, a loan application as well, right? A loan approval model that is trained on past decisions may develop a bias if the historical data that is trained on is biased towards a certain group of people as well. As we know, um, in certain areas in the world, financial data collected is skewed towards more types uh, to, a, to a demographic of people. The reality is that demographic of people have longer financial history compared to another demographic of people. Now, if you put that data in reality into a machine learning model, the group of people with the lesser amount of financial history would always be denied loan. And that is an unfair outcome. So that is another example. Just to also um, round up on the algorithmic bias examples is taking health data. And this is personal to me. A while back, my husband took uh, some health tests like we all do, just to go do a health checkup and all of that. Now, when his results came back, we were sent a letter to come to the hospital quite quickly. Um, and that's because when his test results were run through the system, it flagged a major health concern. 
Um, in the end, not to, uh, this is not about that, but in the end what was found out was that the system that was used to evaluate his results were skewed to a demographic of people, okay? This is an African man, his data set, his results data was compared to a system that has been trained on an historical data of Caucasians. And so when it was, a, when it was predicting the health concern, it was predicting the health concern like my husband was a Caucasian. And so that raised an, um, a panic that was unnecessary at the time. Okay. Now it was not intentional, but that is an example of what an algorithmic bias can be. Eventually an actual human doctor looked through his test and was given the okay based on his demographic, his, his ethnicity and race and all of that. But the system had already categorized him wrongly because that system was largely trained on a data set that didn't have people in my husband's category um, in its historical um, data. So that is an example of what an algorithmic bias is. So, because most of the systems out there, right, before I go into how we can use machine learning to reduce algorithmic bias, I would first like to go into how we can detect bias in existing machine learning models. Now, most of the machine learning models we already out there uh, have, um, have been trained on this data set already. Now, to be able to trust their outcome, I believe that a, an evaluation must be um, um, done on those models to detect bias, right? And there are a lot of metrics out there, but one key metric that I will be focusing on in this video today is the fairness metrics. So using fairness metrics to detect uh, bias in existing machine learning model. Now, fairness metrics are quantitative and what, they, what they do is they measure, well, they actually evaluate whether a machine learning model treats uh, different groups of people equally or equitably, if that's the word, okay? Now, at the end of the day, because um, AI systems don't have the human nuances, they don't have the human agency. They are very quantitative in predictions. It is essential that all groups of people within the data that that machine learning model is trained on are treated equitably. Okay? Now, and this goes across sensitive attributes like race, gender, age, uh, socioeconomic status and the likes. Okay. So we must ensure that the data quality covers all these sensitive attributes equally for all types of people. And that's the only way that we can ensure that everyone is treated equitably. Now, fairness metrics would evaluate your system, right? Or the machine model, learning model the system is built on would evaluate it to ensure that it treats different groups of people equitably. Now, this matrix also helps to detect, measure, and monitor bias in the model's predictions as well. So I'll give us a few examples. Um, example of end matrix, I'll start by statistical, by uh, focusing on statistical parity. And this one is more around demographic parity. So this ensures that all groups of people receive positive outcomes at the same rate. Okay. Once this is applied, it checks that your model, your machine learning model ensures that all groups of people receive positive outcome at the same rate. Example in that loan approval. So your loan approval rate must be um, similar across all race, gender, age, socioeconomic groups and stuff like that. Okay, that's how we can ensure fairness. Another type of fairness metrics is the equal opportunity fairness metrics. And that requires the equal true positive rates across groups. So that means among those qualified for loans, so using the loan um, application system as an example, the approval rate must be equal across all the groups. All right? Now, other... Um, more complex fairness metrics because again 
it depends on type of date and type of system that you're using so you, so you have to determine the appropriate fairness metrics to apply so another type which is a bit more complex than the um, equal opportunity and statistical parity one is the equalized odd yeah equalized odds fairness metrics and what that does it, it ensures that both true positive and false positive rates are equal <laughs> across all groups so it's either the machine is equally predicting um uh, is predicting approval for all types of groups at equal rate and it's also mispredicting for all types of groups at equal rate as well so the 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 its mistakes and its uh, correctness are equal across all groups so that's ensuring that both both true positives and false positive rates are equal across all groups as well. So that's a more complex fairness metric. It's called the equalized odds. Another one is a predictive parity, which checks whether different groups have similarity, similar predictive accuracy. Okay. And there's also the disparate impact ratio, uh, which is a bit more complex. So ensuring that the ratio is the ratio of favorable outcome is equal between groups as well is 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 um is the same across all groups as well so basically it measures the ratio of favorable outcomes across all groups right now these fairness metrics can be applied to all existing machine learning models retrospectively so there is no excuse for allowing algorithmic bias don't say oh we've already trained the model we can evaluate that model using this fairness matrix okay So what is the bias detection workflow, right? So as you can see on screen, um, you have the raw data, okay? Um, and then with the raw data, which you then in pre-processing ensure that there is a better data quality on them, you adjust the data accordingly. You then um, check if bias is found, if bias is found in your raw data, right, you then apply the strategies, which is the strategies that we've mentioned in pre-processing. Either you're reweighting your, your data, adjusting the weight for the minority group, you're resampling your data, or you are creating synthetic data. Once you have adjusted it and there is no bias found, you pass it to train the model. Right now, while you're training the model in 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 process training, you apply adversarial debiasing into that. Right, that's the strategy to apply, and then it goes in circle like that to ensure it goes then straight back to put from in processing to post processing, and then if you need any more adjusting, applying the strategies given. So for post processing, you have the firmness metrics like equalized odds, ensuring equal true positive and false positive across both groups. Once you keep ensuring that you are checking for fairness at every step of your training, then you have ensured to your best ability, hopefully eliminated any form of algorithmic bias, but you would have reduced algorithmic bias um, significantly.